whatever you do, don't fall asleep. No! No! Jason may have the cool hockey mask, Chucky may have the wisecracks, Michael Myers will always be the boogeyman, but Freddy Krueger remains my favorite horror movie icon. He's the total package. So, break out your secret coffee stash, it's time to dive back into some horror. Today, I'm ranking all nine of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Let's get to it. Number nine on my list is the jump scare filled Nightmare on Elm Street reboot from 2010. This movie always had an uphill battle. It was a remake of a classic, and it gave us a new Freddy as played by Jackie O'Haley. The problem is, old school fans never really let go of Robert England as the lead. As a matter of fact, I still don't think we have. When a reboot lifted scenes from the original, it came off less as a fitting homage and more like just checking off boxes. However, in every instance where the reboot tried to differentiate itself from the original movies, it still fell flat. The reboot had some solid visuals throughout, but there were also spots where the CGI still managed to look worse than the practical effects from the original. There's also the inclusion of a previously abandoned child molester backstory for Freddy. This was something they dredged back up from Wes Craven's original characterization, but it was an idea that should have been left buried where it was. Part of the fun of the original Nightmare on Elm Street series was that Freddy was so far out there in the fantasy world, it allowed for the horror to function as escapism and entertainment. But when real, true world horror is dragged into the mix, it just feels like a thoughtless, desperate attempt to add more edge to the character. No! Not again! Number 8 on my list is A Nightmare on Elm Street 5 The Dream Child from 1989. This movie was a bit messy and confusing, and it was kind of weird. And that's saying a lot for a series that featured a wicked witch Freddy and dogs with human faces. We'll get to all that in a bit. Soon enough, I'll be talking about Nightmare on Elm Street 4, which featured a new protagonist, Alice. But Part 5 brought Alice back, and kinda squandered her. There was a lot of potential with Dream Child. It featured a genuinely creepy concept of Freddy corrupting and possessing Alice's unborn child, and that could have been great. However, the execution was somewhat lacking, and the entire story was muddied by things like the return of Freddy's mother, and of course, creepy baby Freddy. I get what they're going for. Freddy was reborn and the themes of birth and rebirth are a thing in this movie. However, Freddy had already returned from being seemingly killed in previous movies. He never had to come back as a baby before, so... The movie was also hampered by bizarre tonal shifts. One second it would return to its darker roots with moments of legit terror, such as Dan's death. But then the movie would do a 180 and we get a campy comic book sequence death featuring Super Freddy. Or whatever the hell is happening here. It's tough for Freddy to be campy and humorous and also really dark. The end result is that the movie always felt like it was fighting with itself. You taught her a lot. But there's so much more to learn. How about this, Doc? <laughs> Number seven on my list is Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare from 1991. This is another one I have a lot of nostalgia attached to. I saw it in a theater when I was younger and the 3D sequence was a lot of fun. Nostalgia aside, Freddy's Dead was kind of a weak ending to the franchise. The movie went all out in the camp department. We got everything from Wicked Witch Freddy, as previously mentioned, to a video game version of Freddy and other bizarre Looney Tunes moments. The movie also made the mistake of cramming in a fair amount of last minute backstory to Freddy's origin, and none of it ever really came together. One last note, we knew back then this wasn't going to be the last movie. Even though the series was already losing steam, most of us figured we'd see Freddy Krueger again. Sure enough, we ended up getting another three Nightmare on Elm Street movies after this. <laughs> Number six on my list is Wes Craven's New Nightmare from 1994. This movie was a unique and creative take on the series, and it's one I've warmed up to more as the years have gone by. New Nightmare was basically Wes Craven's precursor to the meta slasher Scream movies. After years away from the franchise, the man himself, Wes Craven, came back guns blazing. He wrote, directed, and even starred in this movie. Original Nightmare on Elm Street cast members, Robert England, Heather Langenkamp, and John Saxon all returned as well, and they played themselves in a new nightmare. The story was about Freddy invading the real world. It's revealed he was actually an evil ancient entity. Once the film series ended, the genie was out of the bottle. This was a fascinating concept that was executed very well. I do have a few issues with the movie, we don't actually get very much Freddy in the movie, and I wasn't a big fan of his look. Yeah, the trench coat thing wasn't working. 
I think a big point to this movie is that Wes Craven really gave the project his all. He wasn't content to merely craft another sequel and just call it a day. Instead, he took a shot at a clever, self-referential story that blurred the lines between reality and fantasy. I need you, Jesse. We got special work to do here, you and me. Number five on my list is A Night on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge from 1985. This is a movie that has had the fan base divided basically since it came out. I'm a fan of this entry. Granted, Freddy's Revenge does have some flaws and the direction of the movie is a bit unclear, especially on the first viewing. The problem most people have with part two is that the rules from the first movie were not as prominent. Freddy is best known for stalking and killing teens in their sleep. However, the main story in part two centered around Freddy slowly possessing a new protagonist, Jesse, and using him as a puppet to continue his bloodbath. The thing is, we actually did get some genuinely solid dream sequences, and Freddy did haunt the dreams of Jesse. Most dialogue about Freddy's revenge is typically overshadowed by the fact that the movie was an allegory for a homosexual teenager struggling with his true identity. It's understandable why that subtext will be of interest. We don't have many horror movies that go there, much less one from the early 80s. But I think this movie offered up a lot of good stuff. And there was some very creepy imagery. Yep, those dogs I mentioned earlier. Good luck getting to sleep tonight after that assault on your senses. There was also a haunting score by Christopher Young, excellent old school practical effects, and a slightly more refined take on Freddy. Welcome to my nightmare. Number four on my list is the endlessly entertaining Freddy vs. Jason from 2003. This movie was by no means perfect either, but it was fun as hell, and a great payoff for fans who had waited so many years to see two of our favorite horror icons, Freddy and Jason, face off. To me, this movie almost feels like a comic book brought to life which is appropriate considering the fact that there were comics that featured this rivalry as well. The setup for Jason and Freddy's confrontation was pretty clever. The residents of Elm Street have erased all traces of Freddy Krueger. So what's a burnt maniac to do? Well, clearly the only option is for Freddy to slip into Jason's dreams and manipulate him into coming back to life, pointing him towards Elm Street. He does so as a means to regain his own power and continue his rampage. It was pure fun. <laughs> <laughs> Number three on my list is Night Reynolds Street 4, The Dream Master from 1988. I think my top three is probably where my ranking will differ from others. Probably because this is the movie where Freddy started getting a lot more campy and cracked arguably one too many jokes. But I loved it anyway. This entry in the series was still fun and served as a direct continuation of Dream Warrior's story. Mine is Patricia Arquette as Kristen. Here she was recast with Tuesday Night. Which was unfortunate, but didn't ruin the movie for me. Although Dream Master quickly wrote off survivors in the previous movie, it did give us a great new protagonist, Alice, as played very well by Lisa Wilcox. Fine. <laughs> Swish. Kill the fish. To me, Alice had the most interesting character arc of any of the final girls. We watch her transition from shy and meek to a legit kick-ass threat to Freddy. By the conclusion of the movie, you're definitely rooting for her. A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master is a blast to watch, and it features enough trippy moments, legit scares, and creative kills to keep me engaged throughout. Oh my god. A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors from 1987 is my number two pick. This movie is entertaining as hell, it's imaginative, and we all know it's a favorite for a majority of the fans. It holds up on its own as a top entry in the franchise. First and foremost, the story was rock solid. Nancy makes a triumphant return to help teens at a mental hospital go to battle with Freddy. Freddy Krueger was still quite dark and menacing here, and there were no signs of campiness just yet. No doubt by this point, Robert England had pretty much perfected the character. The cast here was great as well. In fact, I'd say they were probably the most likable characters in any of the movies. Hell, even Dick Cavett and Jaja Gabor showed up to the party. Can I ask you something? Certainly. Who gives a fuck what you think? Dream Warriors was notable for not only giving us more innovative and insane nightmare sequences, but also expanding on the mythology of the series. The practical effects in this entry were off the scale. I still love every second of the horrifying Freddy puppet, and of course, Skeleton Freddy, an homage to the classic stop motion work from Jason and the Argonauts. I'm going with the original Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984 as my number one. 
Wes Craven's original movie was so unique and different from anything that had come before. There's no denying the concept of a burned maniac who stalks and kills teens in their sleep is as terrifying as it is fascinating. It's no surprise this movie spawned a huge franchise and an impressive legacy. All of the classic ingredients that endured throughout the nine movies were carved out here. This was a template. Beyond the fact that this movie functions as a great horror movie, if you want to dig a bit deeper, you certainly can. As I mentioned way back when I ranked the movie posters, the themes which were explored in the original movie are open to interpretation and discussing. Was this movie ultimately a creative slasher that was a cautionary tale about the dangers of teen sex? Was the movie a meditation on the struggle between dream world and reality? Was it questioning faith and the value of religion? Was it a mix of all these things? You tell me. Wherever you think the movie lands in terms of its meaning, that's up to you. But one thing that cannot be denied, the original Nightmare on Elm Street made an impact on a genre that none of the other movies ever matched or surpassed. So that's it, my ranking for all nine of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Guys, please keep in mind, these are just my rankings, just my opinion, it's just for fun. I'd love to hear your ranking as well in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, sleep well.